Please, Please stand, stand as you're able to do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, the things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Benevolent, merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us. That with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Habakkuk. A reading from Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 
a portion of Psalm 37 alternating by full verse. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy the security. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. The Lord Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger. Leave grace alone. Do not be provoked to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. The second reading, reading is taken from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestor. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed, a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until the day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, and the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you, with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing and tending sheep in the field, 
come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commended? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we, have, what we ought to have done. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <coughs> Still figuring this whole thing. <laughs> Lots of moving around the books and folders and stands. We'll figure it out. I was told that I could stand right here and speak without a mic on my lapel because there are mics surrounding me and I'm also very loud. So my mom's been telling me since I was a little kid that I was very loud, so it's finally paid off. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how many of you woke up this morning or on many mornings each week and say to yourself, you know what, I really want to read Habakkuk today. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, I did. You did. <laughs> You're the only one because you had to read. <laughs> Habakkuk, is, Habakkuk is one of those minor prophets of the Old Testament, and the um, entire book consists of three whole chapters. And if there is a well-known verse, and I'm not sure it is a well-known verse, but if there is a well-known verse from Habakkuk, it is likely the one that ended our reading today, and it sometimes does get pulled out of context. It says, look at the proud, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by faith. What does that mean? The righteous live by faith. So does that mean that I am righteous if I live by faith or that I am gifted faith if I am righteous? And what is faith anyway? We talked about faith in, I think, every reading today. What is it? And as a Lutheran, am I even allowed to ask the question, what is faith? I mean, it is foundational to us, right? From Romans 3, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift, made effective through faith. So are we even allowed to question what faith is? So Habakkuk says the righteous live by faith, but Romans says that we are all sinners so how on earth can we then be righteous if we're sinners? And if I am a sinner, can I even live by faith? Confused yet? I was. <laughs> faith is one of those words that I think we hear so much, but we don't take the time to think about what it really means that often. So I do want to take right now, in this moment, a full solid minute for us all to think about the word faith. A minute of silent reflection, not for sleeping, silent reflection for us to think about what is faith, or what does it mean to have faith, or even to live by faith. So let's, for one minute, I will time us. What is faith? Think about that word.
I think it's important to struggle with a word like faith because we can become way too comfortable with it and take for granted that we understand what it means. And believe it or not, this obscure, rarely discussed prophet, Habakkuk, not only tells us, but demonstrates to us what faith is and what it means to be righteous. When we first meet Habakkuk, he is angry. He is yelling at God. He says, oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you look? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention. Arise. We can hear the anger in Habakkuk's voice. But are we allowed to yell at God? Are we allowed to be angry at God and to question God? A lot of people feel uncomfortable questioning God, being angry with and yelling at God. But this obscure prophet Habakkuk, he isn't. He sees violence, he sees strife and destruction, and he is angry about it. But it's a good thing that's all in the past, and we don't have to worry about things like violence and destruction and strife, right? Or else we might be angry like him. So, Hurricane Fiona, thats we don't even remember that hurricane anymore because we just had another one in, right? But Hurricane Fiona a few weeks ago battered Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico which is already a, uh, was still recovering from a few years ago hurricane. And it's already a poor island territory. And then Hurricane Ian, before it hit the United it States, States, it knocked the, the, power, power, the power out of the, the entire power. nation of Cuba which is an, an oppressed and poor island nation already. So then it ravaged Florida, leaving flooding and devastation in its path, and it's still wreaking havoc as it makes its way inland and fizzles out. Many, many lives lost, lives upended, years of recovery lie ahead, whatever it means to even be able to recover after your life has literally been swept away in bloodlines. So we do have to deal with destruction like Habakkuk did, I guess. But at least we don't have to deal with strife and violence anymore, huh? Oh, except there's a lunatic tyrant dictator that keeps threatening to use nuclear weapons as he continues to wage war, slaughter civilians, and send young men from his country to fight young men in a neighboring country a generation of young men being senselessly and needlessly slaughtered. And obviously I'm speaking of Russia and Ukraine here, but if you take about away that beginning part that I said about nuclear weapons, this could speak of any number of countries in this world. But on the bright side, we don't have any violence in this country, do we? Year to date, in the United, United States, States, we have had 512 shootings where more than one person has been killed or injured. 243 children aged 0 to 11 were involved. That's nearly one per day. Over 1,000 adolescents aged 12 to 17. Three per day. That's not great. And what about closer to home? We never experience personal pain, suffering, or loss, do we? Have you ever found yourself yelling, why God? Yelling, oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? I have. So 2017 was one of those years that 
shook my, and I'll, I'll use this word here that we just contemplated, shook my faith to the core. So in the spring of 2017, Andy Kaler, some of you may know him, uh, he was the owner of Kaler Drug in Upper Sandusky. Sandusky. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. cancer. We, my family and I, loved Andy. When we first started going to, uh, when, when we first moved, moved up to Sandusky, Sandusky in 2010, Andy was, was one of the first to welcome, welcome us at St. Paul. He made us feel like we welcomed there. He made St. Paul and Upper Sandusky feel like our home when Upper Sandusky as a whole just didn't feel like home. And when we had kids, Andy and his wife Brenda kind of became Upper Sandusky grandparents to them because our family does not live nearby. But within three months of his diagnosis, as we all know, with pancreatic cancer, Andy was gone. And I was numb and angry. And then within a month of Andy's passing, on my way to work, I got a call from a friend, Alex. It was a strange time for him to be calling at seven o'clock in the morning, so I answered it. And there was a long pause on the other end of the phone before he said, and he was speaking of our mutual friend, friend's wife, Tammy. He said, Tammy has cancer. And I didn't say anything. And he said, Sean, are you there? And I, I eventually spoke and we chatted for a few minutes. And then on my way to work, I pulled the car off to the side of the road because I was in shock. But I didn't cry. No, I just started yelling. But not just any random yelling. I started yelling specifically at God. All of this pain that had been building throughout the summer. I yelled, why Andy? Why Tammy? She has two young children. This isn't fair, God. Why are you doing this? <laughs> and before moving on, I do have to say, thankfully, Tammy has been in remission since... 2018. <clears throat> but at that moment, it was a moment of raw anger at God, and that anger was real. And I have a feeling, just a feeling when I look out, that I am not the only one here who has questioned God, at least I hope. I have not been the I'm not the only one who has been angry at God or even yelled at God. Am I? And I think it is from this place, this place of questioning, even frustration and anger, where we can begin to understand faith. Habakkuk was very angry at God. And yet, and yet at the beginning of chapter 2, we hear something that's kind of amazing. He says, I will stand on my watch post, and station myself at the rampart. I will keep watch to see what you, God, will say to me and what you will answer to my complaint. In his anger, in his frustration, in his pain, he is saying to God, I'm standing here. I know you are going to answer me. Habakkuk didn't reject God. He said to God, I'm going to stand here. And from ex experience, this standing and waiting, it is hard to do. I had no desire to go to church for the entire fall of 2017. It felt completely meaningless. I was just going through the motions and nothing more. And yes, I was still very angry in that time, and yet I went. Like Habakkuk, standing on the rampart, waiting for God to attend to my anger. Strangely, I think, yelling at God demonstrates our faith. Not that I think it should be our only expression of faith, let me be clear on that. But yelling at God can at times demonstrate our faith. 
Because in our lowest of lows, when we see injustice, when we experience pain and suffering and death, faith is trusting in God's promises so much that we cannot help but cry out. Yes, even in anger to God and remind God of the promises that God has made to us, his people. Faith is Faith is standing on the rampart, crying out to God and knowing God will answer. Faith is going through the motions of a church service and yet still knowing that Jesus will show up through the bread and the wine. Faith is knowing that God is present with us in the floodwaters of a hurricane and a war-torn cities, present amid gun violence and hospital rooms and our illnesses, even in the death our loved ones. Yes, faith is knowing that God shows up and is present with us in these, the darkest moments of our life. We know that God stands with us in these moments because God and Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. God and Jesus Christ went to the darkest, the most horrible place that existed in the ancient Roman world. Faith is knowing God not as one who promises we won't experience pain and loss and suffering, but it's knowing God as the one who finds us in our suffering. This, my siblings in Christ, is what it means when the Lord says to Habakkuk, the righteous live by their faith. Righteousness isn't just living piously and without sin. No, it is knowing. It is knowing that we are fully dependent on God. Righteousness is being willing to cry out to God even when we feel like all hope is lost, even when we feel like we have no faith left. And paradoxically, I think this may be when this may be the strongest expression of our faith. When we are willing to cry out to God when we feel like there is no God. And this faith. This is the kind of faith, not of Romans, that assures us of our salvation, which is, as a Lutheran, a great kind of faith. But this is the faith that assures us that God stands with us and carries us, especially in the pain and the suffering and the violence, here and now, in this present world. This is God's promise to us, the faithful. And for that, and for the prophet Habakkuk, and for all the saints who have gone before us, like Andy, I say thanks be to God. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. He descended to death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, especially those impacted by Hurricanes Fiona and Ian, Re relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. For victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, especially Bob and Shirley, Jim, Rachel, Joanne, Jim and Donna, Angie, Stacy, Paul, Judy, and Jay, and those we raise aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, for this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving that you have abolished death, and for the saints who have died, bring us all to eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we continue with our offering. <laughs>
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, the, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. to thank you for joining us today for our Sunday service. We live stream every Sunday to Facebook on St. Paul NR. We also live stream to YouTube on our channel St. Paul Lutheran in North Robinson. We accept an offering online, if you choose, on the tithes.ly website. Go to our webpage at stpaulnr.org and click on the Give button. If you want to join us in person, we are located in North Robinson, Ohio. The address is 2307 Main Street, which is State Route 602. We are six and one half miles from Galleon, Ohio and seven miles from Bosiris, Ohio. Thank you again for joining us and hopefully we'll see you again. <laughs>